you've ever tried getting in shape, then you will know just how slow and frustrating it can be, especially when it seems everyone else is burning fat on easy mode, like what do they know that I don't? Well today we're going to break down the simple science of weight loss. If I was actually smart, I would have listened to the people that told me how to do things right a long time ago, but I was hard headed and thought I knew everything. My name is Obadu. I'm an orthopedic consultant and health and fitness enthusiast. In orthopedics, we see countless patients who come to see us with hip, knee or back pain from years of being overweight, causing joint pain and arthritis. So before that happens, I'm going to give you my three evidence-backed pillars for weight loss. And the third is perhaps the most overlooked, but I think the most impactful for most people. Okay, off the bat, there are two crucial things that I need you to understand when it comes to losing weight and keeping it off. First, I want you to reframe in your mind the concept of losing weight and instead think of it as fat burning whilst building and maintaining muscle mass. This is a crucial clarification and I'm gonna explain why. And with the availability of smart scales, what I want you to concentrate on are two numbers. One, your percentage body fat, and two, your skeletal muscle mass. Not so much your overall weight. A healthy man should be under 20% body fat, and that's under 25% for a healthy woman. You can grab a smart scale off of Amazon, and I will put a link in the description to the one that I use. And let me know your weight loss success stories in the comments. Number two, building and maintaining muscle is the key to longevity. It's how we feel strong, get fit, get that shape that we want, regulate our metabolism, and keep that fat off long term. But the bad news is that we all lose skeletal muscle gradually over time, which is why resistance training and weightlifting is a crucial part of your fitness and exercise routine, especially for women where that decline is more rapid, particularly after menopause. If you struggled with your weight, the good news is that people who are overweight have been shown to have higher muscle mass. The first and most crucial pillar of weight loss is diet and nutrition. You cannot out-exercise a bad diet. Bodies are built in the kitchen. And regardless of whichever diet you are doing, whether that's keto or paleo, the primary goal is to burn fat through creating a caloric deficit. But it isn't about eating less, it's about eating smarter. If you focus on eating less, you will eventually go back to eating your normal amount and inevitably put that weight back on. It's not about going on a diet and trying to lose 20 pounds in a week. It's not about the weight, it's about your mental health. And you can see in this video also, it's little changes at a time. To keep this weight off long term, there are some crucial things that we need to understand about food. And there are a slew of health influencers telling us that we need to track our macros, but what does that actually mean? Essentially, there are three broad categories of nutrients, aka macronutrients, that we can get from our foods. Proteins, carbohydrates, and healthy fats. But what do we need to know? Protein is your friend. Aim for 1.6 to 2.2 grams of protein per day per kilogram. Carbohydrates provide energy, especially if you're active. Focus on unprocessed sources like vegetables, whole grains, fruits. And obviously it gets more complicated because, well, carbs are the enemy, right? Wrong. However, carbohydrates, particularly refined carbs like rice, pasta, bread, and sugary snacks and drinks, they are easily converted to glucose, meaning that we get this glucose spike. And this encourages the pancreas to release insulin to help us break down this glucose and use it to create energy for our day-to-day -day activities. However, that energy that we're not using is converted to fat to store and break down in the future for energy. Low carb diets minimize these spikes in blood sugar and insulin, meaning our body shifts to burning fat to create energy in a state called ketosis. And it's because of this that you can see rapid fat loss initially. But remember the fundamental principle to lose weight and keep it off, you need to create a sustainable caloric deficit. So I don't recommend entirely cutting carbs. Instead, focus on unprocessed sources. While the keto and the paleo diets might help you when it comes to weight loss, they could be detrimental for your heart. A new study links that to a higher risk of heart attack and stroke. 
For it, researchers looked at those who ate a diet with less than 25% carbs and more than 45% fat, compared that to those on a standard diet. The low-carb group had a much higher level of bad cholesterol, and with that, were more than two times as likely to have heart attacks and heart disease. Remember I said protein was your best friend, and here's why. When you are on a low-carb, caloric deficit diet, your body doesn't only turn to burning fat for energy, it also burns muscle which we don't want. And so here is why protein is absolutely essential to your weight loss journey. Its main job is in building and repairing tissues, especially muscle. Protein is not an efficient source of energy. So while it supports muscle, your body will still turn to burning fat to create energy. Protein makes you feel fuller, meaning that you reduce your snacking and reduce your overall calorie intake. And I've had a quick look through the literature and here's the thing, no single diet appears to be more superior to another. So what that means to me is the best diet is the one that you can stick to. Studies like the diet fit trial, which had 600 participants, showed that adherence is what really matters. So don't get bogged down by trying to force yourself to stick to keto. Understand the principles. and. For me, based on the science, what that means is eat at a caloric deficit. Reduced refined carbohydrates such as sugary drinks and sugary snacks. Eat a high protein diet because it supports your muscle mass while making you feel fuller. And a fantastic app that I have used time and time again to track what I'm eating and the macronutrient content of my food is MyFitnessPal and the free version is just fine. The second pillar is exercise, but not all exercise is created equal. The goal is to maintain or build muscle while losing fat, and resistance training is key. This could be lifting weights, using resistance bands, or bodyweight exercises like push-ups or squats. Research shows that resistance training not only helps preserve muscle, but also boost your metabolism, helping to burn fat. Aim to strength chain at least two to three times a week, targeting all major muscle groups. Now, cardio has its place too. It's great for heart health and great for burning calories. And you can choose between steady state cardio, like running or cycling, or more high intensity training, which is more time efficient. Now, here's a really important point. Exercise alone isn't enough for significant weight loss without proper nutrition. Think of exercise as a way to complement your diet, to help with burning calories, and build and maintain muscle. Now, if you focus solely on cardio, like running, you may successfully burn fat by supporting your caloric deficit, but you will also burn muscle mass, and that creates two main problems. Firstly, you won't get that strength and that toned physique that you probably are after and you can quite easily end up skinny fat which is a whole different topic but two it makes it harder to maintain as soon as you stop running or doing whatever cardio it is that you're doing you'll likely pile that fat back on without the muscle mass so i think a good regime for sustainable weight loss would include two to three resistance or weight lifting programs per week combined with one to two cardio sessions. Now with regards to cardio, broadly speaking, there are two types, high intensity training and steady state cardio, where you maintain the same level of intensity throughout the session. And now you may hear a lot of influencers talking about zone two cardio, which has been shown to be the optimum range for fat burning. And what that means is that you maintain approximately 60 to 70% of your maximum heart rate for a sustained period of time, which optimizes fat burning and builds endurance. And a great way to do this is incline walking, which you may have seen has become very popular. Okay, I think it's time to stand up and give you the third pillar, which is potentially the most life-changing and definitely the most overlooked. Now, it seemed right to stand for this because it's about increasing your overall activity throughout every single day. And this is called non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. And it includes all of the calories that we burn outside of formal exercise, like walking to work, taking the stairs, cleaning the house, even just fidgeting. So here are some ways that you can increase your NEAT. Obviously, take the stairs rather than the elevator, park further away at work and walk for 10 or 15 minutes. 
maybe get a standing desk, and you can even turn it up a notch by getting a walking pad. And there are lots of studies showing that people with higher levels of daily activity burn more calories than those who are sedentary, and it can be dramatic. Let's talk science. When you lose weight, your body changes, you, it adapts, your metabolism slows down and your hunger hormones change, making it more difficult to fight those cravings. And that's why ultimately a lot of people end up putting that weight back on, which is why understanding consistency and habit forming, as well as sustainability are so important. It's not about making drastic changes that only last one to two weeks. Instead, it's about making smaller incremental changes that you can maintain for as long as possible. A 2011 study showed that creating a modest caloric deficit with a high protein intake combined with regular resistance training was the most effective way to burn fat and preserve muscle. Remember, slow and steady wins the race. So for sustainable results, aim for approximately one kilogram of weight loss per week. So there you have it, my three key pillars of weight loss. Number one, smart approach to diet and nutrition. It's about high protein intake and reducing your refined carb intake. Number two, exercise programs that build muscle and support fat loss. And number three, increasing your daily activity through small but consistent changes. Remember, weight loss isn't about perfection, it's about progress. Find what works for your lifestyle and stick to it. And if you've watched this video to the end, I've got a freebie for you. In the description, there's a link to a free ebook that I've written called The Doctor's Guide to Weight Loss. It's free at the time of recording. I'm not sure it will always be. Make sure you download that. And I want to hear from you. Let me know what you have struggled with in the comments and we'll hopefully address that in another video. Till next time, be good. Bye.